What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lucas and today we're going to talk about using Python and some data science to help with buying a car. So I need to buy a car and I'm too lazy to go to websites and check on information about the cars and use the filters and just manually check that every day is very exhausting. So what I decided to do was I decided to use web scraping and Python to fetch information that I need to help with decision making regarding cars like you know, uh, price, year, fuel, etc. Put all of that into a Jupyter notebook, do a little bit of data analysis and see if I can set up something that, you know, helps me with buying this car. This is going to be the first video on that series. So first things first, I imported some packages that I need to do the web scraping and the data cleaning and pre-processing. Then I target the necessary data. In this case, the data is price, the car brand and the car model, car state, you know, it's, it's, if it's used, new, it's a service car, etc. And then car specifications like number of doors, number of seats, color, power, mileage, fuel, and near. Okay, once I did that, I set up two helper functions. This first function called scrape page gets the results from the soup request with beautiful soup. And what it does is fetches the information that I need that is present in the dealership website uh, search page. That information involves car price, brand, model, car state, mileage, fuel, and year. So I might implement some class. So in the future, I might implement some class that has different implementations of this function scrape page uh, that account for the differences in the search page of different dealerships websites. After I got this information that's present in the main page, and then I set up a second function to get the car specifications from a specific car page. So what that means is that first I'll have a main table with all the basic information about the car to help me get a sense for, you know, what car I'm interested in. And then the second thing that I do once I'm interested in a specific car, I will use this function to get, you know, car specifications, things like the number of doors, number of seats, color, horsepower, etc. So the next thing that I do is that I put everything together into a for loop that will go to the website, make a request. I will use beautiful soup to scrape the page. I will then get the number of pages in the search page. And then finally, I set up a loop over those pages I go to the website, get the response, scrape the, web, uh, scrape the page, and then I find the information that I need. I scrape that information, I save it to a dictionary, and finally save it to a pandas data frame. So after I did that, what happens is I get a result that looks a little bit like this. So you can see it's the information from the website, but before any data cleaning or data processing. So now it's time to do a little bit of data cleaning. First thing that I do is I clean the price data. And in this case, I needed to replace commas with dots so as to allow me to turn the data, uh, so as to allow me to turn the column data into integers, which is what I'm doing in this line. And finally, I plot the result. As you can see in the left, the numbers look way better. Now, finally, I clean the state information. So the state of the car refers to whether the car is used or new. And what I do here is pretty simple. I just do some basic string cleaning to get the right word to define the car state. And in the case when there's no description of the car state, I return a none. Finally, I clean the mileage information. They had a string saying kilometers that I had to remove. And then I turn that column data into integers and that will allow me to plot information and do data analysis uh, after the processing. For the year column, the only thing that I had to do was to turn the column into integers and for the same reason to be able to do uh, data analysis after. So finally, I update the local database that I have, which is basically just a CSV with the information that I fetched before. So I load that data and then I concatenate the data that I have stored with the data that I just scraped. And I make sure to drop the duplicates and reset the index of the data frame. And I plot that information. As we can see, I have no duplicates in the table. And finally, I save that to the CSV file and I have all that information ready to do data analysis. For the data analysis, I wasn't really sure what kind of information I should be looking at and plotting. To. I just decided to improvise. So this is the first version of the data analysis. And I want to do a couple more of these videos where I go into a bit more on what kind of plots, visualizations, models we can use to help decision making regarding, you know, car search. So first things first, I load the data, set up the imports. And since I'm only interested in cars, I make sure to set set up a function that removes uh, motorcycles from my table. And that's just because I'm not interested in buying a motorcycle right now. Then I look at average car prices just to get a sense for how much a car costs. So the average car price is at around 29,417 euros. 
and the medium is at around 23,490. Finally, I look at average prices per car of a given year. So what we're looking at here is how much a car from 2010 tends to cost. So according to the, according to the data that I scraped, the cars are around you know, 11,000 maybe. And then cars from 2008, weirdly enough, they're a little bit more expensive. Finally, I look at the average car prices per brand to have an idea for what kind of brand I should be looking into to buy the car. And as we can see here, um, we see that the average car price for different brands here, what I'm doing is just a basic bar chart of the average car price per brand. So we have, you know, at the lower end, uh, the Chevrolet cars are cheaper. And that doesn't necessarily mean that Chevrolet cars are cheaper in general. That just means that the data that I scraped had cheaper Chevrolet cars. But it gives you a sense, you know, it makes sense that, you know, Porsche is going to cost way more than, you know, an average, I don't know, Jeep or a mini car, a Kia. That kind of points to what kind of brands I should be looking into for buying used cars. Like in this plot, for example, I'm looking at cars like Fiat, Chevrolet, Kia, Seed, Ford, etc. Cars that, you know, when you buy used, they're, they might be cheaper. Uh, but that could change as I gather more and more data. So this is a plot that I intend to have it updating constantly. So one of my ideas for the next video will be to set up a Streamlit app that has all this information dynamically plotted so that every time I want to do an update, I can just click a button, update this information and see how car brands and see how the prices of different brands uh, are changing over time. Finally, I'm looking at cars under a certain price. So this is a table with information for all the cars that are that cost under 12,000 euros. And that's useful because obviously, just like in the filter of a website, you want to be able to filter out the car prices with your budget. And that's an example for the cars that I found that were under 10,000 euros. Finally, what I'm doing here is I'm cleaning the data for the car models. So I'm using this function called clean car model to get a more comprehensive string that defines the model of the car. Because if we look at the actual table data, if we look at car model, these descriptions are inputted manually. So we, when we try to do data analysis using these descriptions, we might have cars that belong to the same model, but be treated differently because it was they were written differently here. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that car uh, that the car model is just a basic definition with the three first words that are in the car model description. And I know that means that sometimes I might join together cars that are not necessarily the same model because they have some different specification, but I really don't care about specific car models. I care more generally about, you know, what kinds of cars and what types of brands of uh, what types of models of cars I should be looking into for purchase. And we can see here that out of the thousand plus data points that I have, we have 434 unique models of cars in the data. And finally, I'm going to plot the average price for models of a given brand. What I'm doing here is I'm getting the brand models, then I'm doing a for loop to get the average price per model. Then I'm putting all of it in a data frame and then sorting the values and plotting those values. And then the output looks like this. So for example, for the Fiat brand, we have at the lower end, the Panda 1.2 lounge at the lower end at around 10,000 euros. And at the higher end, we have the Fiat 500 icon at, you know, uh, 30,000, 30,000 plus euros. And I did that for a few brands. So this is Citroën. So Citroën in Portugal, uh, the C4 1.6 HDI is at the lower end. And at the higher end, we have the C5 Aircross 1.6. And I did that also for Kia because these three brands were brands that I was interested in. So at the lower end, we have Picanto 1.0. And at the higher end, we have the Sportage 1.6 as, um, as uh, in you know, we can use, and now I can start using this kind of information to get a sense for the brands that I'm interested in. And then I can look specifically into those brands, look at the models and see the average price per year for a given model, etc. That will involve having a little bit more data. So I will leave that for the next video. And I guess for today, that's it. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and see you next time. Cheers.